Hey, welcome back. It's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So today I wanted to show you how to generate a uh, early and late curve or also known as an S curve from your cost loaded schedule in Primavera P6. So here's the curve that we're going to generate from our schedule. Um, and let me just explain a little bit about cost curve. So what this is showing is the blue line represents the planned uh, spend on your project per month. Uh, based on how the the activities are currently scheduled to occur. So also known as the early curve, it's just in your in your schedule, once you press that F9, you know, schedule button, this is uh, simply how the activities are scheduled to make progress according to your current plan. Now the late curve is if we were to push all of those activities out until their latest point that they can occur without impacting the project completion date that shows the spend from that curve so um, in essence you're removing all available float from every single activity in the schedule and you're pushing it off until its latest possible point and then that is going to show your spend um, uh, for that curve so theoretically what what's happening is you're going to track your actual cost throughout the project. So each month you're gonna look at your pay application and you're gonna see how much money has been spent uh, to date. And ideally, that would be above the late curve. That And, and it's not, not to say it's an exact science that if you're above the late curve, then uh, the project is either on time or early, but it's just one indicator kind of in the bag of, of tricks that schedulers have. Uh, of evaluating a project health. Um, so if, if that actual curve is staying above the late curve, then it's indicative that the project is, um, is, is maintaining the completion date. So that's a little bit about that, uh, about the curve itself. Um, if we look, I, I like to track the midpoint of the project um, when I'm doing these graphs and, and just put a variance. So, what this tells me is at the midpoint of the project, um, if, uh, if the contractor is, is on time or in indicating on time completion, he should bill, be billing somewhere between, um, at this, on this project, the high point would be 289, 289 million, and uh, the low point would be 219 million. So somewhere in between those two numbers, um, if the if the contractor is on time, that would indicate an on time completion. So, uh, if he falls out of that range below 219 at the midpoint, um, that would be ind indicative that that work is not being accomplished as planned, and that uh, that the, that the schedule is probably late. So that is what we're going to generate today. So I have this cost loaded schedule here, and you can see we have 417 million dollars. It's a huge number. Um, it's a big project. And so the way that we're gonna generate this cost curve is we need to go to our activity usage spreadsheet. Make sure that you're filtered for all of your activities before you start. And then the two values down here that we want, make sure that you right click here. Um, you, yours might say remaining labor units, but we're gonna go to spreadsheet fields. And instead of remaining labor units, we don't want that. We want to go to cumulative costs and let me expand this a little more so you can see and the two numbers that we want are the cumulative budgeted total cost and the cumulative remaining late total cost um, and again uh, i don't think i said it in the beginning the schedule that you want to use for this exercise to establish your early and late curve is your baseline schedule you don't necessarily want to be doing it later on uh, to, to a schedule update. Um, you use the baseline schedule and that generates your early and late curve. And then throughout each update period, you're never changing the early and the late curve. You're only adding to the actual cost curve and you're just plotting that actual cost curve as you go along. So, um, so now we've added those two fields here and you can see if I expand my timeline here, you can see those values are underneath. And make sure on your timeline you want to be set to year and month under the date interval. Um, anything different than that is just going to generate a different uh, cost curve. So I use year and month 
since we're doing monthly schedule updates. Um, and so now what we do is click on, you go to the very top of your, um, of your table here down below. And what I do, it's a little bit tricky to, because yeah, if you if you try and copy these values anywhere else, they some, for some reason they don't come over. So what I do is I, I hit the cumulative uh, budgeted cost curve there. I hold my shift key on my keyboard and then I click this bottom one here. And then I go over to the left hand side of the table here and I right click and I say copy. And I've tried other ways for some reason uh, just doesn't, doesn't work. But um, here, let me let me change my setting here so that you can see. So I, I copied those. Now I'm going to go over to my Excel sheet and I'll just make a new new sheet here. And I'm going to paste those values in here. So you can see see here my spreadsheet field. I have my cumulative budgeted total cost and my cumulative remaining total cost. And then I have this timeline of all of this data that goes all the way out till uh, December of 2026. And uh, if I expand one of those, you can see there's the values. The hash marks just mean it's just not um, not a wide enough column. So. What I, what I need to do now is I need to create a table that's going to be, uh, be able to hold all of this information. So what I do is highlight all of the dates at the top and copy those. And I'm going to paste those over here, but I'm going to do uh, this transpose paste. So it does, um, does all of those dates vertically. And then the next thing that I want to do is my cumulative budgeted total cost. I'll make a header field here for cumulative budgeted total cost. And then I'm going to highlight all of those values, copy them, and then I'm going to paste them down below using that transpose field as well. And then I want to do my cumulative remaining late total cost. And I'm going to do the same thing, copying all of those values. And I am going to transpose those here. All right. So now I have enough information to generate my early and late cost curve. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to highlight um, the headers and all of my values there. And I'm going to say insert. And I'm going to go over here to the line charts. And I'm going to do this guy here. Nice. So you can see here that that generated my cost curve. One thing that I don't like is that um, I want these values to start on zero rather than you can see from the data they have a gap to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new row above this row here. I'm going to call it baseline. And I'm just going to enter a $0 value for both of those. And if I click on my chart here, all I need to do is just drag this up. And there we go. And you can see this changed the values here to just, just numerical values. I want these to be in currency. So I'll right click that axis there. I'll say format axis and uh, I'm going to go down to my number option and I'm going to say currency. So that'll change that there. Um, and then the chart that I was using on the other one, if you just go to chart design and uh, it's this style eight, that was the chart design that I was using on my, on this guy over here. And then my chart title, I'm just going to change that to uh, early and late cost curve or S curve in parentheses. Um, and so the thing that I'm missing now is my, my actual cost curve, which I'm going to be using to plot um, once I start my schedule updates. So I'm going to add another column here called actual cost curve. And all you need to do is right click here, go to select data. I'm going to add a new series and I'm just going to click on actual cost curve and then my series value instead is going to be, oops, it's going to mess it up here. Let me, let me just delete the entire um, data that's in there and I'm just going to highlight all the way down to the bottom of this chart. Press enter. Okay. 
So now that's added the values as I start to enter them in. So you can see here, say my first value is zero, maybe month one, it maybe I bill uh, $15 million. Month two, maybe I bill $16 million. And you can see down here as I'm doing it, it's starting to plot the actual cost curve. So maybe my next month is 22 million. And uh, so you can see that's plotting along. So you wanna, hopefully, as you're, as you're progressing in your schedule, you're staying above the late curve. And uh, if it's below, you know, it's indicative of a late completion, but doesn't necessarily mean, you w mean that you will finish late. It just means you're gonna have to catch up there at the end somehow. Um, if, if that's uh, if that's your plan, you're gonna have to catch that cost up eventually if you're wanting to meet that completion date, which in our case is December of 2026. Um, and then the other thing that I like to do, you know, I added this this midpoint here. So if if I'm trying to find the midpoint of the project, what I what I would just do is I would just do an equal sign and I would just take my last date and I would subtract it from my first date. It's not a perfect science, but it's pretty close. And then I'm gonna take that number and I'm gonna divide it in two. And then I'm gonna take that, that number and I'm just gonna add it to my first date, which was that December 1st. And so that gives me June 1st, 2024 is roughly the midpoint of the project. And so if I wanna just draw a line on my midpoint, I can find June 1st, 2024. And that's my midpoint. And I like just messing around with the colors and the weights of stuff. So I'll just make that a, a three weight there. And then I can add a text box and I can just say, you know, uh, project midpoint, and I can say a variance. And what I want to do is I just go down here to June of 2024, which is right here. Let me move this kind of out of the way here. So I see June of 2024. I see here's my two values. And I just like doing a variance between those two. I just subtract both numbers and we get 69 million. So that's 69. 769, 150, we'll call it 154. And uh, so I am gonna bold that text. And I like using Arial Narrow as a font. Maybe make that a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna do Arial Narrow here as well. And I like using, maybe italicizing that one. Um, and then what I'd like to do is, so we have, that's on the July date. So let's move this over. I, it, I think I stretched the graph out a little bit, but let's go ahead and add, let's see here, where, come on. If you click the line there, it'll show the value. So I'm gonna click on that one value there and I'm gonna add the data label for that. So there's the data for that one. And then if I click on that line, and I can add the data for that specific line right there. So now I have my midpoint, I see my values here. If you wanna add a value here to your actual cost curve so that that's getting uh, plotted along there. And you can see there it's it's a numerical value. Just, just uh, format this column over here so that it's a dollar value. And then that'll change that to a dollar value. So. I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, as always, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one tutoring, come over to the site, pjmss.com. And we also have the best uh, Microsoft Project MP6 comparison tool on the market. So come check it out. It's, uh, it's super cheap and uh, we'd love to see you. So, all right, have a good one. Take care.